Regular viewers will know that I tend to make videos looking at the psychology and motivations of the villains seen in Batman the Animated Series and the subsequent spin-off shows. It's not unheard of for me to also do videos about specific episodes or even some of the heroic characters like Officer Rene Montoya. But there's a character that I'd like to take a look at today who's not exactly villainous but he definitely pushes boundaries. Let's talk about Detective Harvey Bullock of the Gotham City Police Department. First things first, a cursory Google search for Harvey Bullock brings up a series of wikis that basically say the same thing. Harvey Bullock is a corrupt cop known for brutalizing criminals and taking bribes. But that is mostly false. Harvey Bullock is many things. He's gluttonous, he's slovenly, he is violent, but he is not corrupt. Before I get to the DCAU version of the character, let's kick things off by looking at his comic book origins. It's widely reported that Harvey Bullock made his first appearance in 1974's Detective Comics 441. The opening pages of this comic introduce one Lieutenant Bullock, who is very critical of Batman and his methods. However, this Lieutenant Bullock is not Harvey Bullock. Although DC does officially list this as Harvey Bullock's first appearance, there are some similarities, namely his name, lol. The main thing is his rank is wrong. Lieutenant is higher than detective and sergeant. The real Harvey Bullock didn't appear until almost a decade later in 1983's Batman 361. The storyline, written by Doug Mensch, introduces us to Detective Bullock as he barges into Commissioner Gordon's office, informing Gordon that he had been assigned the role of his assistant by corrupt Mayor Hamilton Hill. Gordon hadn't been informed of this and was shocked to see Bullock, mostly because he had been dismissed an in-universe decade prior. Note that a decade in real time is not the same thing as a decade in comic book time. While Bullock's official role was to assist the commissioner, his real mission was to undermine Gordon and even sabotage him with the hope being that it would allow Hill to fire the commissioner. However, this came to an end when one of Bullock's pranks, pretending that Batman had been murdered, led to Gordon having a stroke. While it's true that Bullock resented Gordon and wanted to get him fired, he didn't want to see him dead. Seeing Gordon in such a weakened state as a result of his own actions led to Bullock vowing to change his ways. He stopped supporting Hill and became an ally of Gordon's, regularly working with Batman and Robin. Initially, the acts of clumsiness were done to cover deliberate acts of sabotage, but even when he joined Team Gordon, he continued to knock things over and break things, suggesting that actually Bullock was a bit of a clumsy oaf. Despite his clumsiness, he was a good cop and delivered good results, but he had a secret. When Detective Harvey Bullock clocks off, he becomes Harvey Bullock, classic movie lover. His whole apartment is made out like an old movie theater with framed pictures of his favorite movies from the classic Hollywood era. He's a man who obsesses with 30 year old films, films he likely watched as a child, and it's presented to us as a secret passion of his. A grown man obsessing over things he watched as a child. What a loser, right? <clears throat> When a local gang breaks into Bullock's home and vandalizes his shrine to classic Hollywood, Bullock unleashes his full fury on them, teaming up with Batman to beat some sense into them. Bullock would also be loaned off to act as a handler for Vigilante to try and direct his murderous energy towards solving crimes, and then found himself working for the spy agency Checkmate. Following Crisis on Infinite Earths, Bullock was reimagined as a gruff, slobbish detective that is loyal to Commissioner Gordon to a fault. He had a reputation for breaking the rules, and some noses. But again, he's not corrupt. Bullock would never take a bribe or commit a crime. He has too much respect for the badge. It's just that he has little tolerance for criminals and is quite happy to rough them up. Post-Crisis Bullock was mostly a background character. He was there to arrest the criminals that Batman and Robin apprehended, and didn't really appear much before Batman the Animated Series went into production. Outside of Commissioner Gordon, the BTAS version of Bullock is the most prominent police officer in the show. He initially started out as being in line with the pre-Crisis Bullock, acting as a foil for Commissioner Gordon, but with less of the clumsiness or the love of classic movies. He never tries to sabotage the commissioner, but he definitely undermines him by going over his head. In his first appearance, the pilot episode on Leather Wings, Bullock goes to Mayor Hill to form his own anti-Batman task force, despite the commissioner's misgivings. As an aside, there were brief plans to rename Harvey Bullock to Harry Bullock, as seen in the Batman the Animated Series Writer's Bible, presumably as a nod to Clint Eastwood's Dirty Harry. This was proposed because of this initial scene where both Harvey Dent and Harvey Bullock are seen interacting. Two Harveys in one space was just deemed to be too confusing. However, the proposed change was dropped, partially because of the fear that British viewers might refer to Harry Bullock as Harry Bollock. If you don't know what that means, don't Google it without safe search on. Bullock's antagonism towards Batman can be explained if you view Batman Mask of the Phantasm as a prequel to much of Batman the Animated Series, which sequence director Kevin Altieri told me is the case. 
And I just wanted to say for everyone in the audience and just like to allay everything, this is all of this, not just the, the flashbacks, but all of this is pre-Batman the Animated Series. This is before right. the adoption of uh, Robin. So I see the whole thing as like, like a prequel. Although there's a few things that don't quite fit. Bullock was still a beat cop in the flashbacks from Robin's Reckoning, for instance. But if you take Bullock from Mask of the Phantasm as part of Arthur Reeves' anti-Batman squad as his starting point, and consider the fact that the Phantasm was never publicly exposed, leaving some to still think that Batman was the killer, well, you can see why Bullock would hold such a strong anti-Batman position. Essentially, Bullock thinks Batman is a murderer, and Bullock doesn't understand why Gordon won't arrest him. Doubtlessly, Bullock thinks back to the times when he has been raked over the coals for much less egregious offences, and thinks that it's unfair. Unlike the comic, Beatass's Bullock features prominently in a couple of key episodes. These are POV, Vendetta, and a bullet for Bullock. Starting with POV, we get insight into how deceptive Bullock can be. When describing why the sting operation failed to internal affairs, we see direct evidence of Bullock lying about Batman's involvement. It was Bullock's clumsiness that tipped off the robbers, but Bullock blamed it on Batman to save face. Bullock is antagonistic towards his colleagues Montoya and Wilkes because they don't share his distrust of Batman. There's also an element of Bullock wanting to make the arrest on his own to hog the glory. The original script for the episode called for flashbacks to Bullock's childhood, where his demanding father drilled into him that in order to be a success, he couldn't rely on other people and that he should be able to do everything himself. This part of the story was dropped by director Kevin Altieri, mostly to keep the episode from overrunning, but also because it was kinda sucky. We get a brief glimpse at Bullock's psychology in the episode I Am The Knight, in which Commissioner Gordon is shot during a botched sting. Bullock directs his feelings of powerlessness towards Batman in the form of angry threats, blaming him for not being there on time. However, it was Bullock that persuaded the Commissioner to start the raid without Batman, and deep down inside, Bullock blames himself for the Commissioner's injury. Just look at his expression when he sees the Commissioner on the ground. It's more than shock at seeing his boss has been shot. He knows that he was indirectly responsible, and it makes him angry. Anger is of course a secondary emotion, something we feel in response to another feeling, and this is how Bullock expresses his feelings of guilt and remorse and sorrow. Over time, Bullock and Gordon's antagonistic relationship softens, and we see that Bullock is invaluable to the Commissioner. During Vendetta, when it's suggested that Bullock once may have taken a bribe, the accusation enrages Bullock. Ancient history. Yeah, right. Now it's left up in the air as to if Bullock really did take the bribe, but my take is that he didn't, and it was something that Spider Conway made up to muddy the waters and discredit Bullock. We should note that Croc impersonates Bullock to try to get him imprisoned. If Bullock had done something wrong, like taking bribes or planting evidence against Croc, then all Croc would have had to have done was produce the evidence. Instead, he made things up and impersonated Bullock in order to implicate him. Croc's desire for revenge was simply because Bullock caught him not that Bullock did anything wrong. Bullock's most significant episode is A Bullet for Bullock. One of the unusual things about this episode is that it is a direct adaptation of a comic book from 1992, the same year that the show released. The credits say that the episode was based on the comic book by Chuck Dixon, but that's pretty generous as it was essentially a complete adaptation with a couple of extra scenes thrown in. In this episode, Bullock turns to Batman for help after someone makes attempts on his life. Bullock doesn't want to raise it with his colleagues for fear that they might uncover some wrongdoing on his part. Quite what this wrongdoing is, we're never told, although Bullock makes it clear that he has never taken a bribe. I don't want internal affairs looking at me too close. They might find some things I don't want found. Are you on the take? Watch it, freak! I never took a dime from nobody! I just bend the rules a little sometimes. Throughout the episode, we get a glimpse into Bullock's sad, lonesome life. He lives alone in a roach-infested apartment with few possessions, a far cry from the movie-loving original Harvey Bullock. The worst thing is that when Bullock goes to see his supposed friends, like Summer Gleason, his desperation leads to him irrevocably damaging their friendship. I have to wonder if Bullock lives this gluttonous, dirty life as a way of punishing himself, to prevent himself from having normal relationships or friendships, because he knows that he's done some bad things and he probably thinks he doesn't deserve them. Seeing Batman and Bullock team up to take out the suspects is quite refreshing, and by the end of the episode, the two seem to have a better relationship. Of course, one of the most striking things about this episode is the amazing jazzy soundtrack that evokes memories of the 60s Batman TV series.
It's a tragedy that this episode's score has never been released. My god, will someone please fix this? Bullock's later DCAU appearances put him in the background. He's mostly just someone there to back up the commissioner and arrest the criminals. Although he does have a slightly bigger role in the contentious episode Critters. In the tie-in comic books Batman Adventures Volume 2, we see that Harvey Bullock was fired from the police department after being responsible for an embarrassing incident with mayoral candidate Oswald Cobblepot. Bullock would go on to start his own private detective agency with varying degrees of success. In more recent comics, like Batman Adventures Continue, Bullock is back on the GCPD, picking up exactly where he left off, roughing up criminals, solving crimes, and generally being crass. So I hope it's pretty clear that, yes, Bullock is not a great person. He has poor personal hygiene. He's short-tempered. He's violent, but that does not make him corrupt. 